the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all of Judea were going out to him, and all the region around the Jordan, and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestors, presume as our ancestors, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children. Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is winnowing folk, he is in his hand. And he will clear his fresh and fro, and he will gather his wheat into the ground. But the sharp he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. meditations of all our hearts be accepted in thy sight, my Lord, strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. My dear friends, we are in the season of Advent and today is the second Sunday of Advent. Advent basically means coming. And this season we prepare for the coming of the Lord. On the first Sunday of Advent, we remind ourselves, and I'm sure you would have, that we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And when we talk about the coming of the Lord, we think of three types of coming. We remind ourselves that Jesus has already come and he came 2000 years ago as a human being and the world is preparing to market this coming by selling us stuff that we do not want <laughs> and we Christians prepare ourselves to celebrate God becoming human in Jesus Christ so that is one type of coming that we prepare ourselves for during these four weeks of Advent. Second, we remind ourselves that Jesus is coming again. And when he comes again, he will come to judge us. And therefore, like Father John, Father Will and myself are preparing for exams next week, we need to prepare for judgment. 
So the first coming we prepare with joy because he came as a baby. In the second coming we prepare ourselves to be judged. So there is an element of fear. And we remind ourselves that Jesus is also coming into our lives daily. When we gather for worship like this as a community, when we pray, when we read the Bible, God in Jesus is coming into our lives. And therefore we need to be prepared daily. And we remind ourselves during the season of Advent that Jesus has come and Jesus will come and Jesus is coming. Some traditions criticize the Episcopalians of not talking about the second coming of Christ. But if you really follow the lectionary, we talk about the second coming not one Sunday but four Sundays. Not one day but four weeks. And that is the only thing we talk about during this season of Advent. And because we are so organized, we talk about it only during Advent. So that doesn't mean that we do not talk about the coming of Christ. We do, but we have a time and a place for it. We also have a tradition of Advent candles. And last Sunday, when we as a community lit the Advent, Advent candle all over the world, we reminded ourselves of the expectation and hope that we have as Christians, very especially during the time of Advent. And on the first Sunday, the candle that was lit is known as the Advent candle of hope, the light of hope. And the light of hope refers to the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of our forefathers waited patiently for the fulfillment of the prophecies. And we remind ourselves that we have to be patient. We have to wait patiently for the coming of the Lord. We have waited for 2000 years, yet we are told to be patient. Today we need the second candle, which is the candle of peace. The light of peace. We believe that prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, all of these prophets also foretold that a time of peace is coming. And today we read from Isaiah's prophecy where he prophesied about a peaceful time, we talked about this about three Sundays ago, a great vision he gave to the people of Israel when they were in exile of the lamb and the leopard lying together, the bear and uh, the lamb grazing together, a wonderful vision of peace and that peace is what we look forward to as Christians. Even though we are living in times of great depression, war, natural disasters. We also saw in the gospel reading today about John the Baptist and in the next Sunday also we will continue to read about John the Baptist. And in John's, in Matthew's gospel which is the gospel for this lectionary calendar year, we see that John is coming and preaching in the wilderness. John is not preaching in the city. He is not preaching in junctions where people naturally gather. But he is in the wilderness and people have to go to the wilderness to listen to John the Baptist. And this is indeed a message for us Christians 
who are preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus. We live in cities, we live in towns and we expect God to be in places that there is a big crowd. And I am sure when you sometimes think about this congregation you might be disappointed that uh, the large crowds are not gathering. But yet John's message is telling us that God is visible, God speaks to us in unexpected places. Sometimes in places where people least expect, places where people least gather and people have to go to those places to experience the message of the kingdom of God. We see that John is continuing the prophetic tradition of fulfilling prophecy. John is fulfilling what was foretold about him by Isaiah, about the voice in the wilderness. John is waiting for the Messiah, waiting patiently. And we too are asked to wait patiently. But yet, John is also in the time of waiting asking people to prepare themselves to receive the Messiah. If someone of importance is coming to our homes, if the Bishop of the Diocese of Tennessee is coming to this congregation next Sunday, what would you all do? There is some sort of preparation. Clean the house, yes. yes. That's the basic thing. Not only the house, we will also clean the garden. We will make sure that all the leaves that fell during the fall are not seen. So John is telling the people, you need to prepare. And how do you prepare? You prepare by repentance. You prepare by cleaning the house from within. It is by repentance that you prepare for the Messiah. And it is the same message that actually Jesus also gives. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Prepare the way by repenting. Prepare the way by cleaning the house. My dear friends, we live in a time when there are many temptations. When there are many ways in which we can get distracted. There are many ways in which we forget that the Lord is coming and we need to be prepared. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate Christmas, which is actually for us Christians, God becoming human, the great event of incarnation, Jesus coming into this world as a vulnerable baby, that is a celebration of joy. We also remind ourselves that Jesus is coming again. There is judgment. Sometimes we Christians do not want to talk about because we only want to talk about the God of love and mercy. But the God is also God of justice. And therefore, there is an element of fear. And therefore, we need to prepare ourselves to meet this God of justice, who will met out justice. And we need to prepare ourselves by bearing the fruits of repentance. And the fruit of repentance would mean that we need to make changes in our lives. Like clean, when we clean, we need to get rid of the dust, we need to get rid of the dried leaves that are not necessary. I will not be able to tell what changes you need to make in your lives, but I know what I need to make in my life. So this Sunday, let us think about our own lives. Let us see what are the unnecessary habits, unnecessary elements that we have in our life that we would be ashamed of 
when we meet the Lord, who is definitely coming. Let me end with this story that I read. There's a story of a blacksmith from the Middle Ages. Do we all know who a blacksmith is? Right. Would you know who a blacksmith is? Can you tell her who a blacksmith is? Okay. Someone who makes stuff out of iron. <coughs> In Sri Lanka, we had used to have blacksmiths, but not anymore. Everything is coming instantly now from factories. So this blacksmith was taken as a prisoner and he was confined in a dungeon. Because of the knowledge of his own craft, he thought that he could find a way to escape. He thought that he could find a way to uh, unlink the heavy chains that were used to bound him, to bind him. And he was examining the chains to find a flaw in the chains because he thought that he will be able to find a weakness in the links. As he, as he carefully examined the links, it suddenly dawned on him that it is he who has made these links. And he thought to himself that these chains are his own making. And he is a blacksmith who was so proud of his work because he made flawless chains. And he was so hopeless now thinking that his own chains that was created are now binding him and he will not be able to get out of his situation in the dungeon. My dear friends, when we think about our own lives, sometimes we think that the habits that we have or the lifestyle that we have created cannot be broken. We might also be in a state of hopelessness like the blacksmith. But this, my dear friends, is a time of hope. Advent is a time of hope. Hope that we indeed can be set free as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. So may God, this Advent, help us to really prepare ourselves to face Jesus who has come, who will come, and who is coming into our lives. Amen. Amen. Amen.